Let's say you want to get into PC gaming, but you already own a desktop PC. Or maybe you got a computer a few years ago, and it's starting to slow down a little bit, and you want to inject some new life into it. Well, in this case, you're likely going to want to upgrade your PC, which means removing that dreaded side panel, grabbing a screwdriver and anti-static wrist strap, and swapping out some components. Now, for a lot of people, this might sound very scary, but I'm here to show you that actually, it's not as hard as it looks. And if you are looking at upgrading your computer, hopefully this video will help you out a lot. Now, this video has been kindly sponsored by by Overclockers UK, and if you're wanting to grab some new components, peripherals, or even an entire gaming PC, this is the perfect place to go. You've got a huge selection of everything from motherboards to power supplies to gaming chairs, with competitive prices and friendly down-to-earth service. Check them out at the links below. Let's start by talking about all the primary upgrades you can do to your computer that will actually make it faster, more responsive, or increase your frames per second in games. It's actually really easy to check which component is holding you back. You can simply press Control, Shift, and Escape in Windows, and this will bring up the Task Manager, and it will show you exactly which components are under stress. If a component is constantly pinned near the 100% mark, then an upgrade should be considered. If you're wanting to play games on your PC, then your performance is measured in FPS, or frames per second. An upgrade to your graphics card is likely to increase your gaming performance massively, though you will need to make sure that the new card is compatible with your PC, both physically and technically. You'll need an X16 PCI slot, a compatible power supply, and enough space in your case, so do check all of this before buying. To install any new hardware, it's actually very simple. If you're upgrading your graphics card, then I'd recommend that you uninstall the previous driver from your graphics card so it's ready for the new one. Then you just need to power off your PC, unplug all of the cables from the back, and then place your PC on a flat surface. I'd also recommend that you use some form of anti-static protection, so a wrist strap is a common one, to make sure that you don't build up any static electricity and harm your components. Once you've done this, unscrew your side panel and place this to one side. You'll now see a motherboard, hopefully filled in with some sort of processor and cooler, one or more RAM stick, and then a graphics card. You may have a PC like this one though that's running off integrated CPU graphics, so there isn't actually a graphics card to first remove. To install a new card, locate the top full-size PCI slot on your motherboard, ensuring that the adjacent PCI slot covers have been removed. Now, simply take your new graphics card and line up the bottom connector with the PCI slot. Assuming it fits in your case and the slot covers have been removed, it should then just gently press down into place with an audible click. To remove the card again, there's a release catch just above the slot that you need to hold down. Now, just screw the card into place with the same screws you just removed, and then connect the card with the PCIe power cables. Once again, you're going to have to make sure that this is compatible, because you don't want to get to this stage and realise that it's not, because you'd have to go out and buy a new power supply. Then, it's just a case of plugging everything back in, and installing the latest graphics card drivers from AMD or Nvidia's website, and you should be good to go. So that's how to sort out a graphics card, which I hope you can tell is incredible be simple, but there is actually an upgrade that's even easier and arguably more common, upgrading the RAM. Random access memory acts as a bridge between your hard drive and processor, and it's required to make applications run smoothly. You won't be able to notice if you have too much RAM, but have too little, and you'll experience slowdown, error messages, and stuttering. Now this is definitely the easiest upgrade I think you can do to your computer. Just make sure that you are buying the right sort of RAM for your motherboard. Most people in this day and age, it's probably DDR4, but it could be DDR3. And if you're going to use more than four gigabytes of RAM, that your OS is 64 bit. With your PC prepped as before, simply find the free RAM slots and insert the new sticks so that the notch on the base lines up with the notch on the slots. You can of course replace old sticks if there aren't any free, but make sure that your motherboard actually supports the increased capacitors. If you're after more power for heavy duty tasks though, things like photo and video editing, then it's actually a processor upgrade that will probably help you out. It's perhaps a little more tricky to swap this out, mainly because a lot of processors actually require a new motherboard to work. After you've worked out which processor you want to upgrade to, you're going to want to run a search for the CPU socket type, as this will tell you what sort of motherboard you need. If it does need a new motherboard, you need to swap this out along with a chip, and even if it doesn't, you may need to update your current motherboard BIOS before it will actually take and work. Now, I know what you're thinking, this might sound like scary stuff, 
but it's actually a very common upgrade for someone to upgrade from a Ryzen 3 to maybe a Ryzen 7 or an i3 to an i5 and it makes a huge difference to your PC performance. In my example here, I'm upgrading the Ryzen 3 APU to a Ryzen 5 CPU and gaining two extra CPU cores in the process. I first need to remove the existing chip, which means removing the cooler. Some will be screwed in, while others will be secured with twistable posts. It's a bit easier to actually do this when the computer is still warm, as the thermal material can be a bit gluey when it's cold. It's then a case of cleaning off the cooler and CPU with some thermal paste remover before unlatching the CPU socket and then removing the CPU, and this should require no real force at all. To install the new CPU, it needs to be placed in the same orientation as the old one, with the arrow on the corner of the CPU, matching up with the arrow on the socket. Once again, no force is required and it will just neatly drop into place. It's then a case of relatching the CPU, applying a small pea-sized amount of thermal compound onto the processor, and then reattaching the cooler. If you've never done any of this before, it will definitely seem a bit fiddly, but it shouldn't be too difficult. Now, if all of that seemed a bit tricky, don't worry, as there is one upgrade you can do that's also dead easy and can make a huge difference to your PC, adding additional storage. Inside your PC, you'll likely find an empty drive bay that can take a hard drive or an SSD. You're going to want to make sure that you have the space and that you know the type of drive. If it's SATA, you're also going to need a SATA data cable and a spare SATA power connector. But if it's a PCIe SSD, then the tiny screws that come provided with your motherboard or SSD is all you will need. Then it's just a case of inserting the drive into its new home and securing it in place with screws or a quick release. This will depend on your exact chassis. If you are using a SATA drive like we are here, you'll need to connect two cables, one of which is a data cable and goes to your motherboard SATA connector, and then the other one is a power connector, which goes to your PC power supply. Now I should point out that an SSD is much faster than a traditional hard drive, and if you don't have one already in your system, an SSD can make so much difference to general responsiveness, boot time, and it's by far the most important upgrade I think you can make, unless you're just after that FPS. If you do want to upgrade your standard hard drive to an SSD, you can either reinstall Windows from scratch, or use a data migration program like Samsung's Magician. It is worth checking to see what software, if any, your SSD comes with that will make switching a breeze. So then, those are the upgrades you can do to a computer that will directly impact performance. Obviously, there are more things you can do, and I would call these more secondary upgrades, so things like fans, or things like RGB and all of that good stuff. But realistically, if you're struggling a little bit with performance or you just want higher resolution games or you want your things to render faster, then upgrading your PC can make a big difference. Just make sure that you know which component is causing you the headaches or which thing could be upgraded to actually increase performance, as upgrading the wrong thing may not actually see any noticeable improvements at all. And do make sure that you check that any parts you buy are compatible with your current PC as to eliminate avoidable headaches. I hope this video has been useful for you though and has shown just how simple it can be. If you are upgrading your PC, then once again check out Overclockers UK who are kind enough to sponsor this video, who should have everything you need to get started. A massive thank you though for watching this video. If you've liked it, hit the like button and get subscribed for more videos just like this. And if you're new to PC gaming, there is the playlist PC Gaming Explains that can show you everything you need and you can find the link in the top right hand corner of the screen. But a massive thank you once again for watching and I will see you in the next video.